And now it's time for us to look at the story of the day, the audacious move by Future Growth Asset Management to pull the plug on the state-owned firms has set the cat among the pigeons. Africa's biggest private fixed income money manager says it will stop lending money to six of South Africa's largest state-owned companies. The companies include ESCOM, Transnet, Sunral, Land Bank, IDC and DBSA. The company says the decision follows reported concerns over how they are being run, the government infighting, and reports over threats to independence of the finance ministry. Meanwhile, Old Mutual, the entity that owns Future Growth, has distanced itself from the decision. The company says they will engage the money manager on the decision to suspend the loans. We have... Um very significant uh, relationships across a variety of different parts of the industry with, with state-owned enterprises. We provide insurance solutions, we're involved in writing annuities, for, and we're involved in managing the investments. So it's very difficult for us as Old Mutual to say that uh, this is our view. It, it's not. It's an investment decision, uh, and it's made by one of our independent boutiques, and uh, I think it should be seen as such. We must admit we, we've been very specific to say we remain committed to our various existing commercial relationships with uh, public-private partnerships and SOEs. We are seeing that the effect of this announcement is going to increase, unfortunately, the cost of borrowing for these uh, state-owned companies, and that can only be good for those investors who are invested in the bonds of these SOEs because their yield is going to increase as a direct result of the interest payment uh, uh, going up. So who does it benefit? It certainly prejudices the South African economy greatly in that this SOE is their ability to raise further uh, finance for development and growth is highly impeded, but more so that on their existing debt, the cost has just gone that much higher Therefore, it takes out the free cash that they would have generated to reinvest on expansion and growth. The governing party has declared the stance as erroneous, preemptive and unfortunate. Court unawares, the government has dismissed the concerns expressed by the money manager over perceived risks to its investments. The Minister of Public Enterprises, Lynn Brown, says they were not consulted over the move. I want to assure all lenders and investors that ESCOM and Transnet are credible and reliable borrowers with strong credit fundamentals as evidenced by the respective credit profiles. In fact, as the shareholder representative on behalf of government, I've just recently concluded ESCOM and Transnet's AGM. The boards have successfully fulfilled their fiduciary duties and both companies had unqualified audit reports. Now, these are critical indicators for any international or national investor who wishes to invest in the future of both companies and in South Africa. I look at the, both Transit and ESCOM because that's in my stable. I look at their financials, and I look at the fact that they have just come through an AGM with auditors having audited their books and having had unqualified um, statements, it would mean that they are financially credible. Mm. So if, it, if, it's, if the finances are in place, they, are st they have stable boards, which means that governance is in place. I can only assume that it has to be something else, and maybe it is political. Well, joining me in studio to discuss this further is uh, Tempe Nkosi Josupu from the ANC Youth League and is also an NEC member and uh, from the ESCOM spokesperson, Mr. Kulupasio, is in studio as well. Political analyst, Mr. Sepo Khadima, is here and uh, from Decolonization Foundation, we have Mzwanele Mani and uh, joining us from Cape Town, uh, perhaps a little later on, will be Andrew, uh, Andrew Cantor from Future Growth Chief Investment Officer. On the phone line, perhaps, We'll also have Efficient Group Chief Economist, Mr. Davi Root. Of course, uh, you are viewers. We value your opinion. You can tweet us at ANN7 TV. Go ahead and join in the conversation. And uh, you can also phone us. The phone line is appearing on your screen. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time.
Yeah, good evening. Good to be here. First things first, I'll start with you, Mr. Khadima. Um, we do know that uh, this is it's a wholly owned subsidiary and it is making its own independent decisions. Is all mutual grandstanding at this point? Or can future growth actually make their own, their own independent decisions? Yeah, look, to the extent that um, future growth is an independent company, regardless of who the shareholders are, I guess they are well within their rights, the management, to make a decision. The question that needs to be asked of them in terms of their fiduciary duty as uh, you know, directors and officers of a duly constituted company is that to what extent have they actually observed their fiduciary duty and unless otherwise there is uh, information contrary to what we have seen to date, I, I am starting to question the, you know, the observance of the fiduciary duty. What am I referring to? If we look at uh, currently, we are not aware of any of those six uh, state-owned companies having issued a prospectus or a memorandum for a new bond uh, offering. And not only that, we are not aware of any rating agency that has come up to say on the bond that they would have been issuing, therefore there is uh, the risk waiting is at a particular level. So and the issue of risk is, is really what we're talking about here, isn't it? Let, let's get a word from uh, Mr. Paseo. As ESCOM, we do know that you, you are performing at your best at this stage. The SOE seems to be doing very well, but yet there seems to be a perception, you know, that uh, the investor is reacting to. Um, this is why perhaps they are pulling um, uh, their loaning um, uh, facilities. What is your comment on that? I know you have said that, you know, it, it doesn't affect you. Well, yes, uh, you're correct. We're dealing with perceptions, but the reality is that uh, ESCOM is doing very well. We have uh, stabilized in terms of our operations, but also financially as well. And this year, for example, in terms of our plans to raise money, uh, both within the domestic and international markets, we wanted to raise 50 billion rand. We've exceeded that amount. We are now sitting at about 71 billion rand. And in other words, for this current financial year, we have already met our targets. What we are raising now is money that we will need uh, be beyond uh, this current financial year up until 2022 when we finish all our new build programs. So we, we basically are saying that we were surprised by this uh, announcement by uh, Future Growth. Um, firstly, because they did not inform us in advance that uh, they're going to issue something to that effect. But uh, most importantly, the, the pronouncements looks like they have nothing really to do with us as a company per se, because they were talking about uh, the plan by the government to establish the, the presidential coordinating committee, which has uh, obviously it's a state uh, thing, and therefore if they need information, they need to go to government. But also if they need any information from ESCOM, then obviously they need to come to us. As far as our auditors are concerned, or our our financial performance is concerned. <coughs> we do have two sets of auditors. We have internal ones which are appointed by ESCOM. We also have the external auditors which are appointed by the National Treasury, by the way. And therefore, if anyone had any issues with our financial performance, if they did not trust us, then at least they would go to the National Treasury which appoints the, the external auditors. Right. Um, Mr. Mzonile Manyi, I'm sure I didn't introduce Mzonile. you, Mzonile, when we started our conversation, sure. but of course your contribution is very important to us. We saw what happened with the Oak Bay Group of companies with a perception of state capture that led to the closure of their bank accounts. Do you think perhaps we're seeing the same line of thought and behavior as, as we see with what's happening with the SOEs? I think let's just cut to the chase. Yes. What this is all about is the regime change exercise. This is what this is about. Let's just cut out, out of all of this. This is the regime change. If you look at the underlying SOEs, they're all well run. Transnet is uh, on an investment grade. ESCOM is an investment grade. Land Bank is investment grade. All of these institutions are good institutions. This statement by Future Growth is nothing else but a political statement which is meant to precipitate a regime change. This is quite serious. In fact, I would even go as further as to say, in fact, even charges should be, should be investigated if this Future Growth should not be charged for plunging the country into an economic crisis. This is not uh, happening in a vacuum. This happens behind the Zuma Must Fall campaign. This happens behind all the attempts to try and dislodge President Zuma. This is all part of the plan. This is all part of the plot. And, and, and all that is, this is going to do now, when the, the rating agencies come, they're going to just downgrade the country, we're going to go into junk status and all that. And then they say, you see Zuma, what you are, you are doing when this is all orchestrated. 
So what must we do? I think the first thing that must happen, we must understand where this money comes from. Future growth has got no business threatening the government with government money. This is PIC money. We also want to know what additional treasury involvement is this, because future growth money is national treasury funded, is all the various pension funds. In fact, I think tomorrow, uh, for us as the Decolonization Foundation, we're calling on the president. The president should instruct the SOEs to withdraw all their funding from all mutual. For all mutual to come around and say that distancing themselves, that's just talk. You can't just distance yourself. You should have instructed future growth not to do this. And so on. So we must pull their bluff. We are calling seriously on the president to make sure that tomorrow he instructs all the SOEs, all the government money that is on all mutual must come out. We cannot have all mutual in a very clever way trying right. to dictate what is it that the government should do? This should not be tolerated. Uh, Mr. Joseph, let me, let me introduce you to the conversation. Obviously, serious implications here coming from future growth as decision, particularly because they are using taxpayers' money at the end of the day, and uh, this is government money that they're refusing to give to uh, government SOEs. Does this make any sense to you, especially because some of these SOEs are actually performing very well? You know, I, I think your question is spot on that uh, the decision by future growth, it is illogical. I'm saying it is illogical in the sense that if you look at the six companies or SOEs that have identified, Slang Bank, DBSA, IDC, ESCOM, Transnet, and Sandra, as things stand, if you look at Sandra, there's a turnaround, look at ESCOM, there's a turnaround, probably you'll ask yourself as to why SAA that is currently, we know that is short of 16 billion, is not mentioned. Do you know why? It is because they don't have much interest in there. They have much more interest in the six uh, 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 SOEs. That is your white monopoly capital. That's one. Secondly, what future growth raises is the independence of the National Treasury. Now, as the ANCU League, we ask ourselves, what is this independence you're talking about? Independent from what? Because National Treasury is not different from your Department of Social, Social Development Department of Sport, it is part of one government under President Zuma. So as the ANC we click, uh, in part with what Mr. Manya has called for, we are calling on Old Mutual not to just issue a statement. Tomorrow we, will, we expect Old Mutual to instruct future growth to withdraw the threat to the country, because what they want to do, they want us as a country probably to go to Chiang Sesar, suffer, and everyone can then say, let's stand up, Let's go to union buildings, let's ban parliament, let's ban union buildings, let's ban tires. And that must be chaos in South Africa. That's part of the plan. Right. And, and lastly, on that note, lastly, okay, lastly yes. it is that ESCOM yesterday made a bold pronouncement that they are going to stop the 40 years contracts and empower black people who want to venture in supplying coal to ESCOM. That's what has shaken the lives of future growth. They are just agent in the bigger scheme of things. Thank you very much. Right, with that being said, let's invite to the conversation the man of the moment, Mr. Andrew Cantor from uh, Future Growth. He is the Chief Investment Officer. Oh, we, do, we don't have him at the moment. Oh, okay. Um, well, we have, we have the Chief Economist um, from Efficient Group. Um, Mr. Rich, thank you so much for joining us. Your thoughts with the decision of Future Growth to withdraw their financial services to the SOEs? Well, good evening. Um, I've been listening to some of the, your guests and some of the comments they've been making, and there are, I mean, so many factual inaccuracies. Uh, like, for example, uh, there was a comment made that future growth, and I'm not speaking for future growth, I don't know them, but uh, there's a comment that future growth is managing government money. What government money are we talking about? Can somebody help me out on this, please? PIC. Well, we can actually get a response um, from Mr. Mani, uh, from, from PIC. And, 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 and yes, you can, speak, you can speak directly to him. No, he can hear you. Okay, they've got PIC money. They've That's got uh, various uh, 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 SOE pension fund monies that they're managing. But that's not government money. That money doesn't belong to the government. That money belongs to the, to the, to the civil servants. That is pension money belonging to the civil servants. It doesn't belong to government. Where do you get it that it belongs to the government? It's simply PIC managing on behalf of the Government Employment Pension Fund. It certainly doesn't belong to the government that no, make that these massive are, mistake. These are government Secondly, employees. Now, 
These are government employees. These are public service employees. Madam, if you don't make those speak, I'm going to switch off this phone. You have to give me an opportunity as well. Now, first of all, you have to remember, as an asset manager, and I am an asset manager, I have a certain Can't mandate be. with my clients. I promise my clients that I will manage their money in a certain manner. And that's what I do. And if I see these perceived risks, I manage and I, and I adjust my management accordingly. And that's, this is exactly what this specific my asset manager has been doing. I don't know about any conspiracy behind it. What I do know is that the South African policies and South African government is doing a terrible job in running the state on enterprises. I know, for example, we and I think you've got a representative of ESCOM in your in your studio this evening. Last year, 60 billion rand, 660 billion with a B, not with an M, billion rand was written off. Where is that money coming from? from me and from the other taxpayers in South Africa. And you want to tell me the South African state-owned enterprises are well run? So this South African Airways, as an example, is a bankrupt company. It's a company that don't, they can't have, we can't even get the financial statements because it's, a, it's not a going concern. And without guarantees from government, so, is the South African Airways simply will not be allowed so the war to is land on international airports. Mr. Roots, I, I need to I need to give my so, guests an opportunity to respond so to some of the comments that you have said. The yes, war, Mr. Mike. The war is on, and I think government should take them up on this war. Government should accept this war with warm hands. And, and the when time you say the war come, is on, what exactly the specifically war is do you on, mean? The financial services sector has decided that it's going to run this country. The financial services sector has decided that they are going to be the boss. They are going to negotiate with government with a gun on their heads. This is a response to President Zuma chairing the SOEs. This is all that this is about. It's a silly political statement by these financial services. And I think government should actually take this on. As I say, tomorrow the president should instruct the SOEs to take their money from all, from all mutual. And then let's see what, what, what happens. Right, I think so let's get a comment uh, from, from Mr. Pasio. I'll get to you, uh, Mr. Khadima. Uh, are we at war here? Because uh, Mr. Root seems to say that, look, as ESCOM, you are not uh, governing your SOE very well. So perhaps this was a well-deserved move, move um, from Future Growth. Well, one of the points that was mentioned by um, Fisher Growth is that uh, the, the presidency seems to be sort of encroaching on the, I suppose, w what they would call independence of uh, state-owned companies. But obviously, uh, just by definition, they are state-owned and therefore government is, uh, is having a say in how they, they, they are constituted and how they are run. So I don't know what the trepidation is there, to be honest with you. Um, uh, just about a year or so ago, there was something called a war room which was established by, by government, and government was helping ESCOM to get us, us out, of, out of the situation that it was finding itself in, both financially and also in terms of the operations. All right. We, we, I understand now that we have actually have Mr. Kanta on the phone line. Perhaps, you know, he will explain to us exactly what is going on. Uh, but Mr. Andrew Kanta is coming to us live from Cape Town. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, perhaps you could explain to us how you came about this decision that you will be withdrawing your financial services to SOEs. Thanks, thanks for the opportunity to, to come on tonight. I really appreciate it. Uh, look, we, we manage people's pension funds. Uh, when we talk about future growth, it isn't, it isn't our money. It's people's pension money or people's unit trust money that we manage. And we have to do it in a way that protects uh, that money in the long term. I want to be very clear. The SOEs that we've named are right now strong entities, financially, operationally, uh, and we have no particular issue with them. Um, but as part of any investment process, you need to look at the, the long term. You need to look at long term financial forecasts as well as long term governance questions. Now, the problem is, and I, I really don't want to get into politics, it's not my game, but there's a lot of noise in the country right now. There's, it looks like this fighting between different departments, um, it looks like this power struggles, and I can't assess that. All I can assess is whether we can understand how the decisions are being made by the SOEs that affect their long term sustainability. And, and because of this recent changes, and the, the timing of those recent changes, to be frank, and the lack of communication around those changes, and I'm referring specifically to the president's new commission or council that's going to oversee the SOEs, we don't know what it means. So if we, if we talk, you, you know, the IDC or land bank comes and says, please lend us money for 10 years. And I can do that, but if I can't take a 10-year view on that business, how can I, how can I rationally make a 10-year loan to that business? We are, we are making a plea for information to understand these businesses, to understand how they're going to be governed in a sustainable way. Mr. Kanter, can you confirm that um, as future growth, you're using public money um, for funding these SOEs? 
Yes, yeah, so, so we, we manage people's pension funds. So eventually, if we make a loan today that goes bad in five years' time, I have to stand up to you, the investor, your pension fund, and explain to you why I lost your money. And do you understand that there's uh, thousands of people that could actually lose their jobs and their livelihoods with the decision that you have made today? So, so I think that's not exactly right in the sense that um, what I've just said is very clear. We have been, we have been as much as, in fact, more than many other asset managers, huge financial supporters of these SOEs over the course of the years, and you must ask them that because it's true. Second, we were very cautious to consider their financial positions to ensure that we were not putting them under undue hardship. Third, we are the largest developmental financier in the private sector in South Africa and have been for 20 years. We are their partners in development. I am acutely aware that Eskom provides power and Sunroll provides roads and IDC does industrial financing and the land bank does rural and, and agricultural reform. We are, we are very cognizant of that. We want to get through this process as quickly as we rationally can so we can get back to making loans to companies that we, that we trust in their governance. Mr. Cantor, surely as a business you have a, a kind of relationship with your clients and we spoke to Minister Lynn Brown a few minutes ago and she says that you did not approach her if you had any concerns with some of the SOEs and how they're being run and uh, also you didn't approach any of these SOEs is if you had taken any issue with the way that uh, they're running their operations. Do you think perhaps you could have done this differently? Uh, I think that's true. And, and there's a reason to have this public debate. In our experience in the, in the capital markets, if you, approach, if you approach a particular borrower as a particular lender and say, well, you know, I'm kind of interested in your governance or whatever, you're going to get poo-pooed and you're not going to get a straight answer. Our, our view is that it, this should be a public debate for all the public to see, and in particular for the asset management business to see. And, and that we can, we're, try, we're going to try to make this as easy as we can for the state-owned entities. We're going to draft an, a letter from the industry, not from Future Growth, but from all the asset managers with a list of questions. The SOEs can then answer one letter, not 20 or 30, and therefore they can clear this issue quickly. The, the fact is we meet these guys regularly. The other fact is that the presidential, uh, our understanding of the president's announcement last week is that the SOEs have no idea what it means. So if that's our critical decision factor that affects our ability, then the SOEs can't answer that question for us. So we had to do this in a more public forum. Right. Let me bring this conversation back to studio to my panelists. Mr. Khadim, I know you were itching to say something a little earlier on. Your reaction from the comments we've had from Mr. Kanta and also the whole um, not so clear idea of where this money is coming from for Future Brown. Is it public funds? He does say it's, it comes from pensioners. And uh, of course, Mr. Manu says that uh, this is taxpayers' money and it, shouldn't be, it should be free for government SOEs to use. Yeah, let me say this. It, it's clear to me that uh, it appears that Mr. Cantor has not read Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Because clearly the announcement that they came out with yesterday, we are entering a new arena. And that arena is the hardening of attitudes. The hardening of attitude is by far the most dangerous illness known to man. Because we are now entering an era whereby that hardening of attitudes we are clearly going to all come out of this blind. And what do I mean by that? Mr. Kento knows very well that it is not future growth's birthright to manage money from PIC. Mr. Davi Ruot knows it is not a birthright of efficient group to manage money from PIC. No, is it a birthright to manage money in the hands of the trade unions, which, by the way, if you look at a membership of uh, COSATU, is 1.3 plus million people, all of those have got pension funds. It is not a birthright for them to be adopting this stance, which most clearly they are going to come out poorer because it will trigger a withdrawal. Their announcement has effectively triggered an avalanche whereby there is going to be many others that are going to be emboldened unless they are challenged. They are going to be emboldened to equally say, unless we have a seat at the table, unless we have a say in how the government is run without being elected, we are therefore not going to be supporting your developmental agenda. What can the government do that is elected constitutionally, democratically? What we need in this country, the question is, what is important now? What is important now? We need to look at the amendment of the investment mandate, whereby there hasn't been a prescription of asset classes for most of the fund managers. If you look at the retirement funds industry, 25% they are allowed to hold in offshore in, uh, uh, assets. 
the rest they are to deploy in the economy. But if you look at terms of our developmental needs, our economic uh, growth needs as an economy, most certainly unless these banks come to the fore, and they cannot come to the fore in their own accord, mm -hmm. they can only come to the fore if there is a strong, decisive state intervention is right and, and on that, and that note deals with the let's, economy let's get a response, in terms of the things let's get a response that we need to from do. mr kent i hope you have been listening um to what mr hadim is saying essentially that you know as an organization you have no right um to no birthright to be playing around with the uh, pensioners money the way that you are doing and that your decision perhaps was a bit too hasty and has a domino effect with regards to how SOEs will be run and ultimately how the finances of this country will will be projected Uh, th thanks, Mr. Khadebi. I think you, you raised some good questions and that they deserve, you deserve an answer to all of them. First, let me say this is not public money. It is not taxpayers' money in the sense that it's in the fiscus. It is people's discretionary savings that they entrust to us under clear mandates to seek returns and to avoid risk. That's normal common market practice. It's, uh, we, we do it as a fiduciary, only acting in the client's interest. So when you were, use phrases like play with, that is not a phrase we apply. We are looking after your pension fund, sir, in the most, in the most productive and efficient way we can. So, so, so that, that's the first point. Um, uh, as far as the rest of our prescription, uh, look, I mean, the government can, go, can try to go down that route. It'll be incredibly destructive for the economy overall. Money will flee. And this is not me speaking. This is just rational economics. Uh, it'll be a constitutional question about property rights. And if you would like to tear down South Africa in a Zimbabwe-ish kind of fashion, then by all means, go down that route or try to. But, I'm, but I must tell you that we, we actually play a positive role in developmental finance in South Africa. We have for 20 years. We funded more low-income houses probably than any private sector funder. We funded roads, water, uh, various kinds of municipal lending schemes, low-income and affordable housing schemes, and etc. We are not the enemy. We are your friend in this matter. Now, all, the, all we're asking, and, and I want to be clear, we've embargoed new loans to these entities where we already have substantial loans for a short period of time to ask a series of very reasonable questions. The reasonable questions would be, how are you governed? Who are the independents on your boards of directors? Who are the independents on your credit committees? How do I ensure you are not lending to politically exposed persons and therefore possibly making, making fraudulent loans? This is good common sense. As a, as a government employee, I would hope you would, you would see that as very supportive of your mission. We are fully, fully on board with the mission of these development finance institutions. We always have been. I mean, if I told you the number of exposure we have already, you would be shocked because we are supporters and believers. Uh, and so, so I, I want to refute most of what you've said, or certainly your tone of voice. Right. Let me bring, yes, Mr. Manny. He, he speaks of, um, you know, as a business, they have to run risk assessment, and that's one of the no, major issues that they need that. to look we at. Know all that. That's why these issues are so well run, that they've been rated. This decision is a political decision, and it requires a political response. And I think the, the first thing... He has mentioned, the first thing he said is that, you know, they're not trying to politicize this, but do you think perhaps we're seeing business entering into politics at this point? Th this is business entering into politics. This is a response to a political decision taken for President Zuma to head up SOEs. This is how they are responding. It's got nothing to do with how well run those institutions are. These institutions have just been rated by uh, credible rating agencies. They are doing fine. There's been no issues raised with them by those agencies. What government should do, it should, should take this very seriously. And that, as I said, that the, one of the things that government should do over and above the issue of withdrawing all their money from all mutual, which must happen tomorrow, if, if, if it was according to me. So for us, we're calling for that to happen firstly. Secondly, this prescription uh, going forward, that 50% of all the assets uh, that are given to these uh, uh, asset managers, 50% must be prescribed. So it is very clear uh, what is that uh, this money should do. Thirdly, I'm here, I'm giving all mutual, I've got investments in all mutual, I'm giving all mutual until Monday. On Monday, if this decision of theirs is not reversed, I will personally take my money out of all mutual that have invested there, and I'm calling upon all black people in particular to understand that all mutual is pronouncing against their government. And I'm calling upon all black people, uh, as it were, to take their money out of all mutual and take it to other institutions, because this all mutual is in the political space. All mutual is voting with their asset managers, and 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 we and, and, and it must be it must be responded to politically. Right. Let's ask Mr. Kanter to respond to this. Mr. Kanter, I hope you have been listening. One of the questions is if, if you had a problem with perhaps Trying? some of the S. 
can you hear me? Mr. Kanta, if you, if you had a problem with yeah, some I of the you. SOEs and uh, how they are being governed, do you think it was a good idea to give a blanket um, a solution to all the SOEs, or perhaps could you have just approached these SOEs that you're not happy with and try to come up with a solution? At the end of the day, are you not worried about how investors could look into South Africa and see it perhaps is not a viable of a country to come and, and invest in? I am worried, and it, it actually saddens me that the rand went down yesterday and South Africa's cost of borrowing money went up. It was not our intent. We didn't anticipate a global reaction, to be frank with you. We have engaged with the SOEs. They do not know. Sorry, let me, let me just be, understand what's going on here. The president, I'm not making a political statement, the president announced a new council. Questions were asked about what that council was going to do and what its intentions were. There were no answers to that question. I'm, on the, I'm sitting here with a group of 20 people at an investment committee about to approve loans of 1.8 billion rand. That's Monday this week. And we look at this and we say, we don't know what it means. We just don't know. And the government's giving us no guidance on what it means. We can't make these loans. We must suspend loans. And we must communi communicate that to the SOEs involved. So that's the starting point. It isn't about anything else. It isn't about make a political statement. It's not even that, that council could be a very good thing. It could be about it could be about coordination between the SOEs. It could be about efficiency. It could be about about uh, about mission. I don't know. It could also be about nefariousness, about getting about about power influencing uh, money allocations. And I don't know that either. I am making no allegations. I'm merely asking questions. So that's the, that's the first point. I want to be really clear. This was not an old mutual decision. I, uh, let me finish. I'm not talking about old mutual's money here. I'm talking about pensioners' money, third-party pensioners' money principally. We have some old mutual money under mandate, which we are accountable for. This is a future growth choice. You want to fire somebody? By all means, fire me if you don't like it. And I have no problem with that. I don't expect the world to love future growth. I deliver good investment returns over long periods of time in a fiduciary manner, acting for clients. That's my job. Right. Um, uh, Mr. Jasupu, let me just get a response from him. Obviously, you know, the, the announcement that the presidency would chair a council that will oversee SOEs could have um, had a reaction to some of these uh, um, financial investors. Do you think the government is doing enough to make sure that these SOEs are not affected when it comes to these issues? No, look, the first thing that I want to, to say is that I'm, I'm, I'm convinced now, sitting here, particularly by seeing uh, how emotional Mr. Tavu Road is, that we're on the right track. When a white person is in the, in the economic field and feels threatened, you must know that indeed President Zuma's administration is, is on the right track because he knows that we are touching on the nerve where it matters most. That's, that's the first point that I want to make. Secondly, it is not for the first time that there is a coordinating committee or council. They must go and do their research. As things stand, the president is sharing what, what is called your PICC, your Infrastructure Coordinating uh, uh, Council. That is looking on the long-term infrastructure uh, program that the country is going to invest on. Now, because of there have been uh, calls that uh, there is instability uh, in SOEs, the president saw it fit, of which those are powers entrusted and to him. It's not un unconstitutional. That he has to do so. It is quite hypocritical of people like Kanta to come and say the president cannot uh, 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 intervene. But when it suits them, when, when, when the hawks were saying that they were giving an ultimatum to Minister of, 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 of Finance, they were the first ones to come and say the president must intervene. The president says, no, I can't intervene into hogs. When it suits them, the president should not intervene. But when it suits them, the president must intervene. So I'm saying that the president is acting within his rights. In fact, it is not the first administration to have a presidential coordinating council. And we do have other councils that are in place. And lastly, Mr. Kanta keeps on saying people's money, public money, who is the public? Have they consulted this public that, that they're talking about? Mr. Mani is sitting here. He is saying he's not consulted. He's against it. Have they consulted the millions of the people that have invested? Yes. And the money they are using. Who are those people? Is let's let's get Mr. Kanter to respond. Mr. Kanter, please respond. Yes, put me back in there. Yes, please jump right in. 
Okay, so, so uh, it, it's pensioners' money, and yes, we have consulting them. We work under mandates. We talk to their consultants. We, are very, we have very clear <laughs> mandates. I just want to say something. Uh, my investment committee, my investment team, is one of the most racially diverse in the country, and it's big. 20 people sat around the table of every color you can picture. This is not a racial thing, and I find it personally offensive, this racial argument. Just because I disagree with you does not make me a racist. No, you must grow up and stop tearing down this country. We're in, we're in New South Africa version 2.0, the racist version, and it must stop now. You're doing damage. Let's talk about rationality. Let's talk about whether these SOEs will be able to survive for another five years if the, if the piggy bank gets raided. All I'm doing is asking very reasoned investment questions to get reasoned investment answers. And that's all. Nothing else. No politics. No crap. Give me answers and I'll give you money. It's simple. Right, gentlemen, yes, you can respond. Obviously, the racial card being thrown in no, here, are we diverting no, fact, from the real no, issues? No, 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 he's confused, this man. In fact, it is it's a racist bullshit. decision that they're taking. Mr. It's Kant, a, I'll ask you to please watch your language. Bullshit. It is a racist decision that is taking because they do not have confidence in black people. They could not have confidence in President Zuma. We just this agree, is so I'm a racist. You must stop this now, sir. Decision. You must stop this. It's destructive can, can to the country. Yes, please. No, 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 no. I'm, you, see, you see now, we're dealing with people who don't have manners. This man is insulting us on TV. We are trying to say. You've called me a racist, right sir, on TV. You can TV. see that as a man. You've called see, me a racist speaking. on TV. Okay, okay gentlemen, like can we have some he kind was, of decorum, please? Let's watch our language me. and make sure we are respectful towards yes. each other. Um, I'm not sure anyone called anyone a racist, but I think yes. that the race card has been thrown in there to see that yes. if it has been a part of some of the decisions racist. that have been made um, by future growth. And I think it is worth uh, uh, pursuing and analyzing this evening. Yeah. Yes, no, no, I was saying that, in fact, uh, it's not only a racist decision. This decision is actually in the same class as terrorism. This is rule by terror. This is to try and get this government to walk on tentacles, to not know what to do, uh, to try and say, what can you do to please your financial services? This is what it is. This is, this is, this is, this is terrorism, uh, as it, and it should not be allowed. And for us, people that have voted this government are calling upon this government to be decisive and not tolerate this thing. Government must take firm decision and make sure can that we, we this kind of terrorism uh, that is advanced by future growth with the backing of uh, all mutual must not be allowed. And government must act decisively and get its money can we, can, can out we, of all mutual because all mutual is allowing this to happen. This nonsense about they making their own decisions mm -hmm. while distancing itself, and yes. yet you're not instructing them. Yes, let's, uh, let's, let's get a reaction from tolerated. Mr. Kant. I, I see he seems to be wanting to say something there. Mr. Kant, I hope you're still with us. Would you like to respond? I know you have said that, um, you I'm, know, as a business, really, you're not trying to really politicize interested. anything, but it, it appears that some of these decisions that have been made by future really growth not. could be linked to that. Okay, I think, look, I, I think I've said what I have to say about our duties and, and our analysis process and our engagement with the SOEs, but which, by the way, so far with the SOEs, and we've spoken to four out of the six, very productive. They are very willing to talk to us. They, they've sent us already a lot of information about their board structures, their governance. I believe that with some of these SOEs, we will clear this issue within a couple of days, and we'll be able to tell the entire industry and the world that that is done. So please, let's not over-dramatize what's happening here. I'd like to come back to the prescription question, if I may. Go ahead, Mr. Cantor. Okay, so on the issue of prescription, there's been a call over the years that if, if, if pension funds don't invest money into development for the, for the nation, they will be forced to and they ought to be forced to. Um, I, ha I have some sympathy for the view that money needs to be channeled. That's why we run developmental funds and we invest quite a lot. As I say, we build low-income houses, uh, student accommodation, roads, water, et cetera, taxi finance, the works. But, but uh, what I'm afraid of, if we go down the prescription road, is there's going to be too much money chasing too few good deals. There's going to be enormous money lost. It's going to be like the NASDAQ bubble in the 90s or any other bubble you can see. So I'm not hostile to developmental finance in any way. Um, it's just the way it has to be done or it ought to be done. Uh, the other point I would make is if, if there's a feeling by government, which would not be an unreasonable feeling that money needs to be channeled towards development, there's huge government-owned and government-underwritten pension funds, and I notably note the PIC, whom you mentioned. I think the Eskom Fund uh, is, a, is a defined benefit fund, uh, and et cetera, uh, worth probably two trillion or more rands. Believe me, you've got plenty of money. If you think developmental finance for the nation ought to be done, you have the power and the right 
in all regards, constitutionally and decisionally, to make those decisions. You don't have to mess up the markets and the private sector and make it a battle. So I'm, I'm, I'm not hostile to the idea of developmental finance. I just don't think waving around prescription is a productive discussion. It just scares markets and makes, uh, makes investors run away. If you think I did damage today, believe me, you go, out, you go out with a press release about prescription, the rand will plummet. Money will flee. We don't need that. We have seen that um, your response to the SOEs has actually affected um, the rent. But just very quickly before you go, Mr. Cantor, you being a wholly owned subsidiary and making your own independent decisions and uh, your mother body, so to speak, um, saying that they do not agree with the stance that you have taken with regards to financing um, or not financing the SOEs um, you know, going forward. How do you intend to, to make this relationship work with your mother, mother body? I don't have to. I speak to my clients. It's their money. It's not Old Mutual's money. They, they own us. They, they, they oversee our governance and, and, and such, but they don't, they don't tell, well, they even, they even wrote a press release saying they distance themselves from our views. So I think that speaks to your other guests' comments. Um, I, I answer to my clients, and they know that. That's the deal. I mean, if, if, if my clients thought that we were making decisions on behalf of Old Mutual with their money, they'd immediately fire us, as they should. And, uh, it's just not, it just as the, if I was making political decisions with their money, they should also consider firing me. It's not what we do. We make economic decisions and financial decisions and credit decisions and lending decisions. Okay, so essentially, uh, Mr. Cantor, you are saying you will not uh, be um, taking a step back when it comes to your decision, no matter how much it affects the economy. Oh, that's rubbish. I didn't say that. <laughs> I, I, I specifically said we're, we're working quickly to engage with the SOEs. We've already been previously and actively act afterwards, this announcement, actively engaging with them and the asset management industry to clear these issues, to understand what that commission or council means, to understand the consequences for the governance, to understand how the governance structures are currently working and ensure that they're working in a sustainable way. Sustainable means the money's not going to be burnt and lost and pissed away, frankly. So if we talk about, um, and I don't mean to pick on a land bank, but a land bank or IDC, they make loans to people. If the governance is such that they can make loans to anybody with no governance and no controls, they will destroy that institution within five years. I don't believe that is going to happen. I don't forecast that. I just need to have clarity that it's not going to happen. That's all. Mr. Andrew Cantor, thank you so much for your time this evening. I hope you still, and I understand you have been wanting to leave us uh, for a while now. Perhaps, Mr. Khadima, yeah, you could I mean, throw I mean, in a quick I'm, question I'm before you go. I'm not Mr. Cantor's advisor, but certainly I think it was a fundamental error for him to have gone public on something that really there is very little else that anybody else can do, except that we are now sitting with the effects of the announcement uh, that they made yesterday. And those effects, they, they are not good at all. And, and, and also, I wish that he did not mention that uh, as an industry, they are going to be writing a letter uh, which is effectively a threat to the state that, well, unless uh, you tow the line, we are therefore going to deal with you. So I hope that, uh, if he's still hearing, that that letter that uh, he uh, mentioned that the industry, all the other industry players, all the other asset manage, uh, managers, they must not be in any shape or form you know fall into that trap because it's certainly not good it's not good for them it's not good for us as i say it will lead to the hardening of attitudes but if anybody believes in the national development plan you therefore cannot believe in the national development plan and the august economic growth targets of four to six percent between now and 2030 and not deal with the issue of prescription of investment mandate. You cannot not deal with that issue. If we look into in the environment we are in today, the retirement fund industry is sitting with over 5.4 trillion rand. The national development plan in terms of between now and 2030, there's an investment in economic infrastructure to the tune of 4 trillion rand. Okay. And when you look at where currently they are deploying their capital, are they deploying it in efficient? Are they deploying the capital in productive industries? The answer is no. When we deal with the SOEs, is any of the SOEs, has any of the SOEs defaulted? Even if they were to default, by the way, there is a three percent, in the event of a three percent uh, chance of default by any of the SOEs, they are all backed up by a sovereign guarantee. There is over 600 billion rand of capital that is currently sterilized, which is being what for the uh, 
the current borrowings by the state-owned companies. So there are much more bigger questions, much more deeper questions that we need to be asking. And hopefully we'll be but getting this those type of an approach we... that we are seeing tonight is certainly not helpful. Even the issue of South African Airways. South African Airways is not seeking 16 billion rand. They are seeking to refinance because their interest costs are just way too high. Therefore, they are wanting to be okay. efficient. I, I, just, I understand Mr. Kant is still with us. Perhaps he could respond um, to some of the stuff that you have said. Mr. Redima, Mr. Kant, I hope you're listening. A lot of points to make there, so thank you for, for that. Um, I, uh, I believe uh, that sunlight is a very good disinfectant. I believe that a public discussion about the state of the SOEs is a good thing because I believe they are strong. I believe they are good companies. I agree with you about the capital bases, although I don't know the number. They are not government guaranteed, however. When we make loans to these entities, we take credit risk. They may not pay us back. That's the critical point. I don't think it's unusual for a lender, any lender who makes anybody a loan, whether it's a company or an SOE or an individual, to, to, to ask about their finances and how they run their lives and, and how much debt they've got and how, how much income they've got. These are normal questions. That's all we're asking. Uh, governance questions are part of that. It's says normal behavior. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you don't like that I did it in public. I'm sure you don't like that this industry is going to ask a bunch of questions collectively. But it, it is the reality. We need information. We need information to make investment decisions. Credit ratings help you. You mentioned that. I'm not denying it. But we need better information. The ratings agents right now don't, also don't know what the heck's going on. And then until we get an answer about this, it's very hard to make investment decisions. Um, if you look, by the way, uh, you, you mentioned that $5.4 trillion as if it's your money, you have some right to it, which you don't. But if you look at how much money is really deployed of that money into national development, you would be astounded. Look at how much debt Eskom already has on their balance sheet. It's in the hundreds of billions of rands, and a lot of that is funded by domestic institutions. That's true of all of the SOEs, and by the way, central government itself, who is also the biggest infrastructure spender in the country. That's all funded, or many, much of it is funded by domestic institutions. We are there. We are your partners. This is not a fight. This is a simple set of questions that we should ask as fiduciaries so we can continue to do business with SOEs. Please don't make this a fight. Mr. Manu, are we making this a fight? Yes. No, no. The fact, that, the fact that the Minister of Public Enterprise was not even consulted on this matter, it just shows the level of arrogance uh, that uh, future growth and all mutual uh, are perpetuating. It's a serious industry arrogance this, by these people. Uh, they, are, they, 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 are, they are throwing the country into a panic mode so that they can dictate terms. All they're trying to do with this uh, silly strategy of theirs is to make sure that when they say jump, the only question you must ask is how high? because they have got everybody terrorized that the rent is going to plunge if you don't do this uh, and all of this. And we know that tomorrow there's going to be all kinds of analysts that are going to be writing all kinds of articles to support this narrative. So this is all part of a strategy to make sure that this government is sterile, this government cannot make progressive developmental decisions. This is all part of it. Uh, so it should not be tolerated. So right. I hear what you're saying. This is not a, an economic decision. It's a political decision. They have been unable to dethrone President Zuma. And this is what this is about. It's all about making sure that they remove President Zuma. This is the whole strategy. Mr. Kulupasewa, your thoughts. Are you, are you worried that uh, you know, this could lead to other lenders perhaps also pulling back their financial services and increasing you know, the costs of your lending and affecting your whole operational costs? Well... Um, from our end, as Navalo, we have uh, today, as a matter of fact, we spoke to Mr. Kenta and uh, we also spoke to um, a few other um, uh, asset managers within the industry, basically asking them whether they share the same sentiment as uh, future growth. And it looks like Mr. Kenta and, and uh, future growth are, are on their own because the ones that we've spoken to today were saying that uh, they don't have the same concerns as uh, future growth. But obviously they are within their rights to articulate their, their views, but uh, their views obviously are not necessarily right. Yeah. So from our end, we will, uh, in, at some point, after our discussions today with uh, um, future growth, we had said that uh, they are going to put up a list of uh, concerns they have, and then at some point we will meet so that we can uh, bury our differences. In the interim, I'm just praying that uh, we're not going to have a situation similar to what uh, um, Tegeta has been facing, where initially you started off with people making statements like this, and then before you knew it, people were closing their banks. So I'm just hoping that bank accounts, I'm just hoping that uh, we're not going to be seeing uh, this as a precursor of uh, some of these companies saying that uh, they are closing our accounts as well. 
All right, um, Mr. Kant, uh, I understand you're still with us. Would you like to respond to that, that this perception that you're creating yeah. could snowball into uh, more serious ramifications? I, I just to, just to, yes, that's fine, I'll, I'll cover that. But I, I would observe that we had a very productive, friendly, professional conversation about a set of reasonable questions, which I think we all agreed were fairly reasonable questions. You, whatever poll you did of the industry is fine. Maybe it's just future growth, maybe it's not. There's still reasonable questions. Let's have that conversation. That's all we've asked for. Um, uh, so now, as far as whether it's going to snowball, I think we're very cognizant of the danger if you go out and shout fire in a theater that you could cause a run on a bank, for example, and therefore tear down the bank. Uh, we're talking about SOEs who run sophisticated treasuries, who borrow money for 5, 10, 20 years in most cases, um, and therefore there is no way they can have a run of the bank because the bonds don't mature tomorrow. This is a process that's going to take a month or two months or three months to get through. They're, they're not tight for funding. There's cash. They're, they're doing capital expenditure over long periods of time. There's no, not going to be a run on these banks or these entities, um, and nobody's worried about that. Nobody's mentioned that to me. So this is not something, oh my gosh, we're burning down the house. This is a discussion in a rational way, but in an open forum, so the information gets shared across the industry. So please, let's not be alarmist. But perception is very important, and that's the same one that you have created as future growth, to say that SOEs are in trouble and ultimately, you know, scaring away investors. I didn't say that. No, but that's... Not that's, that's I I've been very cautious in my comments at the SOE. Let me, let me reiterate then, let me reiterate. We approved, first of all, we have billions and billions and billions of debt to these SOEs already. We have approved them from a credit point of view. I had a credit approval on a financial base to lend another one point billion rand on Monday. Monday. We had to stop that process because we were worried about, if you're gonna make a 10 year loan, you need to have a 10 year view of the entity. We don't know what the politics might do to these companies, so we had to ask the question, what might politics do to the companies? That's all we've done. Right, so let's I get not, um, I, I, they are very strong financially. They currently have reasonably good government. They have good governance as far as I know. They are good entities. I want to work with them. I am their partner. I didn't say they're in trouble. I didn't say run away. It saddens me that people perceive that. Unfortunately, we have to perceive it that way because the effect of that announcement has created a crisis. The question is, could the management of future growth not have foreseen the eventuality and the consequences of their announcement when they made it yesterday. But and certainly they haven't helped. And tonight, if anything, which crisis, there's been which more... Crisis the, are we talking the, about? The, contradiction, the, the contradictions in terms of your statement, Mr. Kento, unfortunately just make the situation a lot more worse. Because you, on the one hand, you are saying that these entities are strong, they've got good cash flows, none of them have defaulted. But at the same time, you are now bringing in that there's a level of uncertainty and hence, it goes back to the point that was made earlier, this, this, that as an asset manager, do not be in politics. As an asset manager, continue doing what you do to invest for a return. And to date, all the investments, the track record that you have pointed out here tonight, your company, Future Growth, has done very well. And it's for that reason that you, as a fund manager, you are well rewarded for that because those underlying investments that you have made have got very good cash flows. They are not defaulting and they are servicing their loans as and when they become and, and we're running out of so time. Very quickly, not, gentlemen, final comments. Yes, Mr. Manu, you very quickly. Yes, crisis. Danish Bank has already said they're not going to uh, fund their score. So it's going to, the next, tomorrow, another bank is going to say this. Right. This is all because future growth has undermined the confidence of ESCOM and other institutions. So tomorrow, if this man is serious, he must issue a retraction tomorrow if he's serious and issue a letter that says he's got, what he's saying now, that he's got confidence in these banks and in these institutions, he must issue a statement tomorrow. That's Gentlemen, also. we have run out of time. Let me take this opportunity to thank uh, all my guests and my panelists tonight who were giving us their very valued insight into the issue of future growth, um, withdrawing their financial services to state-owned enterprises. On that note, this is all the time we had for BizSense. Thank you so much for joining us. Do join us again tomorrow, same time. Have a good night. BizSense was brought to you by Vodacom.